Welcome back, Backyard Astronomers. And today we're in the Greenboro Observatory and we're going to be discussing part two of our telescope series. Today we want to look at power and the eyepieces. How much power can I get out of my brand new telescope? Well, that's what we're going to try to find out. Stay tuned. Okay, I guess what we need to do is just review just for a minute uh, where we're at. Last time we talked about the three types of telescopes that are available for uh, amateurs. Well, one was a refractor, and it was uh, considered a three-inch scope, which is 80 millimeter. And the other one was a reflector, which was a five-inch scope, and it's 125 millimeter. And uh, the big boy up there is a 10-inch catadioptric, and it's a... Uh, uh, 254 millimeter. Now, that brings us to some, some questions. Is when you go to buy a telescope, especially during this coming season, within the next four or five weeks, we're going to be seeing a lot of telescopes in, in department stores and things like that. And what they're going to try to do is they're going to advertise all this power, 400 power, 500 power, 600 power. Uh, what they're saying is they multiply 600 times, 500 times, and all this. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible. Is it useful? Not necessarily. And that's why we, what we're going to look at right now. Okay, let's, let's look at it. I'm going to use an example for all three of these scopes. It's just considered, forget that they're catadioptric, reflector, or refractor. What matters is, the diameter of the objective, and the focal length, and the eyepiece you're using. All right. Uh, the focal length, uh, if you don't want to calculate it, can be found just by looking on the telescope. Now, on this particular one, is our reflector. It's a 5-inch, and it's considered 125 millimeter diameter. And it's, uh, says it's a 1,000 millimeter focal length. That's how far it takes for that mirror to bring it to focus. Now, they're using a number. This is an F8. Now, we'll look at that in a minute. The big scope up here is a 10 inch uh, diameter, 254 millimeter, and the focal length of it is 2,540 millimeters. It's an F10. The small scope over, over here was a, refra uh, was a uh, yeah, refractor, 3 inch which is considered 80 millimeter, and it's uh, an F8, and that would be about 640 millimeters in focal length. Now, what does that tell you? Now, that's very important. Now, when you um, when you look at buying eyepieces, and keep that in mind, when you get looking at buying eyepieces, like this particular scope right here, it came with some objects. Uh, it had most scopes are going to come with either one or two uh, eyepieces. Now, this particular scope came with an eyepiece. Right here is a, that's a high power of 0.5 millimeter. Real high, high power. And it had a low power, which is what everybody commonly use. And this one is 18 millimeter. I'm sorry, this wasn't 0.5, this was 5 millimeter and 18 millimeter. This would be considered the high power and this considered the low power. That's normally what you were going to get, something in that neighborhood. Now, these particular eyepieces I wouldn't care for. If you look at them, they're only 0 0.964, 0 0.965 inches. That's not even a full inch diameter. Both of them. Most of your uh, department stores are going to sell telescopes that's going to have eyepieces of this size. And these are pretty much, they're getting where they're, they're no longer made, but you're going to find them around Christmas time on all kinds of telescopes that you find in, uh, anywhere that's for uh, low dollar and try to move real quick for Christmas. What you want to do, and we'll discuss those eyepieces in a little bit, what you want to do is you want to Get rid of them and go to something useful. Now, telescope eyepieces usually come in 
0.965, and inch and a quarter. These are considered today to be the standard. They're inch and a quarter. Now I'm going to take the low power. This is the 0.9. This is the inch and a quarter. There's a big difference, and you need to look at that. And one of the biggest things you're going to see, if you'll look into the ends, you've got some major eye relief. Now, these are two of the low power. Now, what good is that doing us? Well, let's, let's just say about that. Um, now, here's another piece that'll come with me. We're going to talk about that in a minute. That, that comes with this particular scripture. We'll leave it right there just for the time being. I'm going to talk about that. Now, what they say is, 400, 500, 600 power telescope that you're going to buy for your for your child or for yourself, and it's going to be something in the neighborhood of three, four, or five inch somewhere in that neighborhood of diameter. Is that possible? Yeah, you can multiply anything. It don't mean it's necessarily good. Okay, let, let's back up a minute and let's look at where some of these numbers are coming from. First off, uh, let's look at the uh, focal length. Uh, I keep mentioning the diameter of the scope. And the focal length. Where did that come from? Well, usually when they ground the lens, or it's ground at a curvature, that can cast, as they can do F2, F4, F6, F8, or whatever they want. Uh, so that just determines the amount of curvature, and that will affect how long the focal length of that mirror is, which take it how far that mirror will come, or that lens will come to a focal point. Now, that being said, uh, what the, uh, if we take, uh, Say this one up here, this, this uh, three inch refractor, and it's an 80 millimeter, and it's an F8. Now it's going to be marked on it that it's F8. You take the F8, we take 8 and multiply it by the uh, 80 millimeter. That's 640 millimeters. That's the focal length. Easy. Uh, the five inch skirt, uh, it's 125 millimeter, and it's a, uh, I wrote this down. It's also an F8, so if it's point, I mean it's 125 millimeter diameter, and you multiply it by eight, you're going to get a thousand. So that thousand millimeters is a focal length of that five inch mirror. Now on the big one, it's a ten inch mirror. It's an F10. So ten times 254 millimeters is going to give me 2,540 millimeters. Easy. So you can walk into the score, store and actually read it off the telescope, or you can calculate it yourself, because then that you know how to do it. Now, next thing you need to figure out is, uh, well, how much power can I get to my telescope? Well, let's look at just the focal length of the telescope itself and, um, and the mirror. According to mirrors and lenses, the average industry uh, figure that's used is 50 times the diameter of the, of the mirror. Uh, if, uh, if I have a mirror that's uh, 3 inches, if I multiply 50 times 3 inches, I'm going to get 150. If I multiply 50 times 5, I'm going to get 250. If I multiply 50 times 10, I'm going to get 500. That's, that's the maximum power you're going to get out of that scope. That's all there is to it. That's useful. Now, can you get 600 out of either one of them? Sure you can. You can put whatever you want. Say, a while ago, I made a mistake and called this a 0.5. Divide that sucker into it and tell me what you get. You're going to get a big number. But the point is that the, the whole idea is the size of the diameter. Remember, we talked about that gathered power. The bigger the diameter, the more light gathering power there are. That's on any one of the scopes. Now, if you start multiplying that 50 times, then you can actually get a little bit more power. So the bigger the, thing, the more power you think you're going to get. Yeah, it's up to a certain point. But after a certain point, it will become useless to multiply. If you don't have enough light and it gets dim when you put a high power in it, all you're doing is multiplying a dim. It, it just gets worse. You can't see anything. It's not useful. It's not useful magnification. So remember, the useful magnification of your telescope is 50 times uh, uh, the diameter.
All right. If uh, if we started looking at let's take our eyepieces. Let's forget these right here for a minute. Let's say we bought our scope, and our scope has we're going to take these these eyepieces and use them. Now you know what's capable. It said what I can get that's useful. But what's going to make the difference is when I put the eyepiece in there. Is what magnification am I going to get? Okay, in. let's see what so we got. We're going to take a 26 millimeter eyepiece, which is the low power, and we're going to check it against all three of our scopes. Now, on the five inch scope, we have determined that we have a 1,000 millimeter focal length. So we're going to divide 1,000 by 26, and that's going to give us approximately 38. So 38 times is what it's going to multiply. Now if we do that to the 10 inch scope, the 10 inch scope has a 2,540 millimeter length. We take the 26 and divide it into 2540, and we're going to get something like 96. So this one's going to multiply 38 with the same eyepiece. That one's going to multiply well, roughly 100, about 98, uh, 96. So that's pretty good. Now on the 3 inch scope, which is really 80 millimeters, and we determine the focal length for 640. We divide 26 into that. We're going to get something like uh, uh, 24. So we'll get 24, 38, 96, and that's with the same eyepiece. Now we can do the same with the high pop. Now remember, this is a 32. This is a 12.4. If I did 12.4, let's go with a five-inch scope. <clears throat> now this is considered my high my high power eyepiece. I'm going to take 12.4 millimeter and I'm going to divide it in on this scope into uh, a thousand. And that's going to be roughly 80. It's going to be 80 times. If I did it to the three inch over here, that's uh, 640 divided by 12.4. That's going to be uh, uh, 51. So that's really not that bad for that one. So that'd be 51 for that low power. And if I did it on the big one, the same thing would have been 12.4 divided into 2540. And that would have been 200, well, roughly 200, about 202. So you're looking at when you did the focal length versus uh, the size of the mirror, that told you how much you were capable of getting as useful eyepiece power. I mean, useful power. If you stick an eyepiece in it, that's so that you can actually see, the eyepiece is going to determine what you're going to get because you need to take the size of the eyepiece and divide it into it, and that'll tell you what you're getting. Now, that's not all that hard to do. Okay, so you get to thinking now, I've got these two eyepieces. Now, first off, you need to get rid of this stuff. You can buy a converter to convert your scope to this if it's a scope that's worth anything. And if it's really worth something, it's going to have these with them already. Now, they may not be the same size, uh, but usually they're going to give you a high power and a low power on good quality scopes. Some scopes will only give you one, and that's going to probably be the low power. Now, you say, well, how can I get more power? Well, you can buy more eyepieces. You can say, I want, remember I've got a low power and i got a high power. Well, there's a lot of room in between here. And there's some over here too, if you like. So you can buy all these eyepieces. Now, some of these eyepieces are going to be, get kind of expensive, uh, buying a whole bunch of eyepieces. See, I've got three cases of them. I keep eyepieces galore. Well, there's something that you can do. And that's called... Now, this is with uh, the original, for this scope here. This is called a Barlow. This is what you call Now, this is a 2x Barlow, which means it does something times 2. Now, what does it do? In essence, what it does is it multiplies uh, your power of your eyepiece. But let me back up on that. In my opinion, because I use a Barlow for other things, the power, the eye, I mean, the Barlow, what it does to the scope, when you put it in the scope, it doubles the focal length. Now, what happens if you double the focal length? Well, people put their eyepiece in there. It's going to put 
the low power wire piece. Let's keep this around. I don't like it. We put the low power now. Well, instead of having 26 now, uh, multiplying it uh, uh, on this particular scope here, what was I getting? Uh, 38. I can put this uh, doubler in there, a uh, Barlow, two times a two x Barlow, and I now get 76. Is that right? Yes, it is right. And we'll discuss a little bit more about that. But what really happens is you're doubling the focal length of the telescope. Instead of it being uh, uh, F8, it'd be F16. Uh, but people don't even think about it that way. If um, uh, so, in other words, you can save you can save money this way and buy eyepieces, say one or two eyepieces, and then use this, and you'll get if I double this, this eyepiece would I have two eyepieces. If I double this one, I have two. What well, else for? Two of them are free. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, you can actually buy a, a ball load that works three times. Uh, now, the reason that you would want to do that, it would be more or less to be save money. And at the same time, there's a little thing called eye relief. Uh, what? Eye relief. And what eye relief is, is right here in this little hole, is where you get the image into your eye. Now, looking at this, this one has a pretty good eye relief. Uh, if you look at this, I don't even know if you can actually see that one, but that's a uh, little teeny tiny. Uh, so what really what, what happens is you end up when you put your eye up here is you you have to if you get small at the smaller or the more powerful the eyepiece is the smaller that eye eye relief is going to be, and you'll end up with this crammed up at your eye. That's what these rubber pieces are for. You put this, you put this up at your eye. Now, if you're wearing glasses, that becomes a real problem. So you have to roll these down and do it. Now, so that's a benefit of a bar load. Bar load actually doubles the focal length, but in the same essence, it, what you want it to do is to give you more eyepieces, and that's a good thing. That that really works that way. So what we have now is uh, get rid of the point nines go to inch and a quarters and an inch and a quarters you can either buy now what i done is i bought more more eye pieces but i also bought these barlows barlows were actually double the focal length and it will also make my eye piece another eye piece that makes me have two eye pieces with the same eye relief that's the key now, uh, that's pretty much covered. And that's something I mentioned early on these uh, telescopes. All these telescopes, when you get in awkward positions, I mentioned using a diagonal. This is what the diagonal is. It's You put it in to your eyepiece, and it goes in like this. and I mean, to your eye holder, eyepiece holder, and put your eyepiece in here. And so that gives you a chance to look down. Instead of trying to do like this, very, very convenient. Now this doesn't double anything. All it does is is it put your eye in a better position to look through. Now you need to get a good one when you get one. Uh, the reason for that is is because they don't reflect light very well. Now this one here uh, is the one that came with my big scope, and I've replaced it off it and put this onto my smaller scope. And uh, the one I put on it reflects 99% of the light that passes onto it. So that's pretty good stuff. All right. That's going to kind of wrap it up for uh, our eyepieces. I want to see if I've left out anything. I don't think I did. But just remember, the power of your telescope is not going to be four, five, or 600. It's going to be your diameter of your uh, telescope divided by your eyepiece and that's going to give you how much power you're going to have uh, if you want to know the focal length you know, we've already done it so that's where you get your numbers so um, next time uh, we're going to be covering uh, another item and it's going to be our mounts we'll look at mounts and things that we can do with. so until then if you like what you saw hit like now if you've already subscribed don't hit subscribe again because hitting subscribe a second time will cancel. You'll no longer be subscribed. 
And I think that's what's happening to some of my friends. So if you've already subscribed, don't do it again. Don't do it but one time. But if you've done it twice, you need to hit it a third time so you'll resubscribe. So until okay. next time, keep looking up clear skies.